All right, guys. Uh, I've had a couple requests on uh, what do I carry and what's my uh, radio equipment look like. So I'm going to show you what's inside of my carry bag. And when you hear uh, when you hear me do my activations, you know exactly what I'm using. Oftentimes, I'm telling people about the antennas or the different antennas that I'm using. So I figured I might as well just show you what I'm talking about. All right. So here's an overall of everything and then I'll kind of talk about each part. Of course the uh, the main part of the whole thing, the brain of the operation, is the uh, Yaesu 817 ND. Um, I particularly like this radio because it is uh, it's pretty durable, it's a little heavy though, um, but it has a self-contained battery pack inside of this lid right here. That unscrews and you can do double A's or the rechargeable battery. And what I do is I just leave the rechargeable battery in there and then uh, what I do for power, for some reason that got cut off, but I use this, uh, this cable that I made here. And it's just the power cable, a little ferrite bead on it. And then I basically soldered in uh, one of these connections right here that uh, goes on top of this. And this is just one of the, uh, this is a 4200 milliamp battery here. Uh, provides 13.2 um, volts as a four cell. This thing lasts quite a while. It's kind of, it is kind of heavy, all things considered. It is a, a LiPo battery, or this one's a Life battery, L-I-F-E. Uh, I have a couple LiPo batteries that I, uh, I use as well, but this one right here actually will allow this radio, the A17, run at five watts, uh, no problem, without tapping into uh, the internal battery. Uh, it's a pretty good battery. It lasts a long time. Uh, I can listen to 40 meters all night long when it's rocking and rolling, a lot of squelch and static, and I'll get to that in just a second. So regarding the squelch and, and static and stuff, I have both hand mics here. Depends upon what I'm going to do will depend upon what I take. Uh, I do like how light and small uh, the actual hand mic itself is. Uh, the downside to that is the speaker is not so good. So if you're on HF, uh, sometimes it can be hard to dig a weak signal out. And being a weak signal, you want to be heard. So I bought this, uh, this Heil headset, uh, the Pro Micro with a little attachment right here. And this thing right here gives me the ability to put the radio on the ground and that cord's long enough. And then what I do is I end up logging on, uh, on an app on my phone, I'll show you in just a second, called 73. And it's a pretty good little app. And that allows me to pretty much go hands-free. I just use the voice activated in the radio and then just log as I go. So that's, uh, that's the two different type of microphones or headsets that I use. So the next most obvious thing are antennas. The two antennas that I use, I bought this little SMA wire adapter. So when I'm doing two meter sideband, generally speaking, unless I say I'm on the arrow beam, this is the, uh, the I don't know if you can even see that, but probably better off down there. That's generally speaking, that's the antenna that I'm using, just little little antenna right there and it works really well. I've been doing uh, doing some great contacts on a two meter sideband and, and uh, even on a UHF sideband. Next to that, of course, is the uh, I think a 12 foot thing of RG8X, and then I put the BNC adapter on there to go to the trail friendly wire. This little wire right here is the LNR Precision Trail Friendly Wire. This is my HF antenna. You can see I think it weighs three and a half ounces. Um, end fed BNC connector right there. I put this end on my trekking pole, string the wire out, and put it up in a, a tree or actually have a push up pole. And the cool thing too is these little attachments right here, the little deals. I put them right here and right here. Really helpful for securing some things in place, so I'd, I'd recommend picking up a couple of these little things for a couple bucks. So 12 foot plus the antenna uh, goes up in the tree. I use some five paracord up on the other side of the tree and, uh, and just cinch it down with a weight, a stick or a rock and kind of pull it up and hoist it up. And uh, usually that balance is just about trekking pull high, so right about waist high thereabouts. And that's, that's what I use for the antennas. So the next thing I'll talk about is just uh, you know, in addition to using my uh, cell phone with the app 73, and I'll show that to you next. Um, I also, of course, bring three by five cards just to write on. And uh, I have the different antenna tuned where they're at, the SWR, so that I know I have the HF pack frequencies that I can use, uh, so I can memorize what those are. I even put some memories into the 817 that uh, just remind me, it just a flip of the channel, then I just start spinning the dial from there and that uh, just gets me on frequency faster. Then of course uh, the general class band plan 
it's always good to know. I messed up one time out there. And then I do is I bring some uh, information on the different peaks that I'm activating. You can see this one here, Trail Peak. I put the numerics to the peak, the GPS coordinates, uh, even the elevation. I get a lot of people ask me elevation, of course, how many points, and then if it's been activated before or not and when, so that'll be kind of fun. And I put a few of those and a bunch of blank 3x5 cards. And I basically put all those together, strap them down, put that there, and then I put it inside of a, a Ziploc bag and keep it all nice and waterproof. So you're going to waterproof bag. Everything fits inside of here in this little Osprey bag. This thing weighs like nothing. It's waterproof and it keeps it all nice and contained. And once it's all wrapped up, I'll show you what that looks like. So regarding the app, you can see that I use the, uh, the Soto Goat app. I also have this GPS trails, which I can offline, put some offline maps on there. So I can put my phone, phone into cell phone mode. And then I can basically pull up the map base of everywhere that I go and uh, off the grid maps so I can see exactly where I'm at, what I'm doing. It syncs with any kind of videos or pictures I take onto the map. And when I put at the end of the videos, uh, pictures of the map, usually I've gone in there and I've drawn those on there. And this is the, the Hamlog 73. This is the app that I was talking about. I clear it out every time I'm done activating a peak. And so this is what it looks like. And then I just start the log, press make contacts, and it shows up already with Zulu time, time off, I enter the frequency. Uh, all the information that I need, I put in the notes, I put the, the peak that I'm on, uh, I put the, the, uh, the RST for both ways, I put it all in there, then I just save it, and then I'll have a whole list on there. And if I activate multiple peaks, um, then I, I just basically sort them out, and I email that to me as an ADIF file and upload it right into Hamlog. Some other cool features about this, you can see there's all kinds of different little things here from CW Helper all the way down to... Uh, Soda Watch, UTC Clock, the band plan. That's providing it's able to get an internet connection. Uh, all the Q signals, azimuth calculations, if I know where you're at, grid to maps. There's just a whole bunch of tools in here. Worthwhile little app. Again, it's called um, Hamlog, or it's got the 73 thing on it, you can see right there. Worthwhile app. It makes the logging quite simple. So, a fairly new addition to the pack here. I always carry an HT. And uh, HTs are kind of cool to have. I put the uh, Yesu uh, VX8DR in the pack with a little microphone with a GPS antenna on it. Uh, a lot of times I go in these canyons, can't talk to the wife, and I basically run APRS through it. And then there's an app on my phone that I've got uploaded onto the wife's phone, and she's a ham as well. And the app that she uses is called Open APRS. And when you open that up, uh, all she got to do is go into search. And she looks up my call sign right there, and then she can see exactly where I'm at. This is the last plot that I was, and you can see where I'm at moving around. So she's able to track me via APRS. Uh, this will be the test run. Actually, tomorrow we're going up to the Sierras. Go hike some 10-pointers and be really remote, so we'll see how well uh, the VX8 does up there. So that's kind of the, the new addition. Hopefully, and I'll be able to send emails and text messages to her phone. So hopefully that'll make her happy. Of course, the soda flag. Got to fly the flag when you're up there. Um, but that's pretty much all I'm using to do all my ham radio stuff. I do have a couple other batteries. Uh, I'll grab those right now and show you what they are. So these are the two other batteries that I carry. You can see they're 3300. Well, this one's a 3300 milliamp hour. The other one's a 3000 milliamp hour. They're both three cell, 11.1 .1 volts. Uh, these are basically, you put, uh, these are LiPo batteries, uh, lithium polymer batteries. Uh, pretty lightweight, actually, um, and they complement the battery pack inside the 817 real well. It uh, doesn't do too well when you run on 5 watts. I think if I were to do it all over again, uh, you know, these were given to me by my friend Dave, KI6LSF. If I were to do it all over again, uh, given to me alone, I should say, I'd buy just a couple of these. Or even Buddy Pole has the, uh, the big battery packs that another friend of mine uses quite a bit, and they seem to do real well. But, you know, these are the batteries that I'm... I'm plugging in and, and making them work, and so far so good, can't complain. We'll see how much I can get out of them though this week. So when it's all said and done, I uh, basically strap this to the back side of my pack, the antenna up, and this will go up on my uh, sternum strap. The entire kit is in here. Uh, I'll show you something here in just a second, and of course, the cell phone. So that's kind of, that's exactly what I'm carrying just to do my soda stuff, aside from the trekking poles and one other thing. So the final thing to show you is uh, my dog's backpack. So fits on it real good. You've seen her in the videos. Uh, you'll see her again. And uh, keep it pretty simple in her bag. Uh, open this up real quick. 
all very important toilet paper, a little emergency kit. And then I put one battery in there for her. And the reason why I do that, and on this side too, we got a little bit of parachute cord just to pull things up. The reason why I do that is because on the other side, I end up uh, putting in her water and or uh, bowls. So to offset the weight, you know, that's the, uh, the water filtration kit for all of us. Her portable dog bowl, collapsible dog bowl. And I collapse these down. I got two of these half liter Arrowhead bottles in there. And then before we go, I'll even out the weight on her with, uh, with the water bottles as ballast with everything else. Uh, also got one of these little deals, pretty cool. Just a little spot for her so I can see where she's at at nighttime. And then hit it again, it'll go, it'll sit there and flash. So at nighttime on the trail, be able to see her. So that fits on her. My dog weighs about 65 pounds. And, uh, you know, she's in pretty good shape. She does a lot of the hiking, as you see. And they say hiking dogs and carry backpack carry up to 25% of their body weight. So I'm keeping her well under that. And uh, took her a little getting used to the pack, but now she wears it like a champ.